What's up Lollipop, my name is Joe and in today's video, what should we expect from Apple at WWDC this year? We should be expecting iOS 17, iPadOS 17, watchOS 10, macOS 14, HomeOS, tvOS, maybe a new Mac Pro and maybe Apple's Reality Pro headset. This is what we're about to embark on on Monday at WWDC. So in this video, I'm just going to talk it over with you. It's Sunday evening. Sit back, relax. Let's talk a little bit about Apple products. Okie dokie, here we are. Apple is about to introduce some cool stuff for us based on what they've released so far because they released some accessibility features that are going to be part of iOS 17, such as AI voice, which means that you read text up onto your phone and uh, the phone via AI is going to mimic your voice. So it's going to be really cool. Also accessibility features such as big icons and everything. Now they introduced Final Cut and Logic Pro for the iPad and if they decided to choose these two products, these two professional products that everyone was asking for for a long, long time to do it separately in a press release and not focus it on the event itself, then that means that their event is packed. I have a feeling that it's going to be one of the longest events that we're about to see because there's so many things that they're going to update. In terms of iOS, they will be updating the widgets. There might be a nightstand mode on always on display capable iPhones, meaning iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max and the new iPhones 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, which means that if you put your phone on the bedside, and you turn it landscape or portrait, whatever, it's going to show the clock, it's going to show so show some information for you. While you know, it's in bedside mode, just like the Apple Watch has it talking about the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch is going to get an update too. it's the 10th year. Watch OS 10 is about to embark on us. And Apple has not really changed the operating system on the Apple Watch since watchOS 2. They changed it from watchOS 1 to watchOS 2 was a big difference year over year. Ever since then, they didn't really touch it. Now they might touch the grid view or the list view is about to change. We're going to have widgets on our Apple Watch as well. Live activities on the Apple Watch. We have watches that have always on displays, so they might as well use live activities on here as well. WatchOS is Generally exciting. I'm excited to see what it will bring for us, but I'm eager to find out what Mac OS 14 will bring for us because no one has spoken anything about that. I realized that in my country, they raised the price of iCloud services, including iCloud Drive. Mac OS has not been talked about, but it's year over year. Not, no one really talks about Mac OS. And then they come out with a, a brilliant feature. You can use your MacBook to control your iPad, for example, with one keyboard and mouse. And last year, we didn't get much fun with Mac OS. I truly hope this year they're bringing us something cool. In terms of home OS and TV OS, it's never a big deal. Maybe this year, we'll, who knows? Who knows? I, I truly think that this time, these operating systems are not going to be in focus. What is going to be in focus is a new product. And that new product might be either a Mac Pro or it might be the Reality Pro headset. Let's start with Mac Pro. Last year, Apple introduced us with the Mac Studio. They came out during WWDC and they said at that time that their transition is almost over to M processors with only the Mac Pro left, but let's leave that for another day. That was one year ago. Hopefully that other day is now June 5, WWDC 23. So it's time to move on from Intel. I'm curious to see in what way and form will they present it to us? The other interesting thing that started out like this, it was supposed to be glasses. It was supposed to be AR glasses. If you put directions in your phone, your glasses, you could see the arrows pointing which way you need to go. You get a message, you get something, you would be able to see it here. And instead of this, we're getting ski goggles. And now according to a couple of sources around the interwebs, Mark Gurman, he's saying that it might not be something that the Apple upper management is proud of and they are distancing themselves from it. Now, my question is, when has 
Apple done this ever. They wouldn't release a product that's not ready or they're distancing themselves from. Tim would never release something that he's not feeling comfortable with. Okay, Apple Maps was a different story. But regardless, it's not the time to be embarrassed about products, especially when you've been developing it since 2015. That's when we were hearing about the reality glasses. Now, these reality headsets or glasses or whatever, it's going to be two 4K screens in front of your eyeballs, making it the high re highest resolution VR goggles you've ever seen with more than 5,000 nits of brightness individually each screen. That's going to burn your eyes out. It's going to be like staring into the sun. My only question is, what's the price? Well, the price, according to a lot of leaks and rumors and sources, is going to be around $3,000. This is not for you. It's not for me. It's not for a lot of people. It's for the developers. That's why they're introducing this at a developers conference. So these people can buy it. They can start creating new games, new software for this device. And if we recall, first generation Apple products are never really a big success. iPhone came without 3G couldn't even do videos. Apple Watch wasn't really the health conscious device. iPad, no cameras at all. So the first version of each Apple product is basically a test. But Apple, when they test a product, they make it ultra premium. They see if the ultra premium market likes it, creates hype for it. It becomes like a status symbol to buy the $3,000 headset. And then next year, when they make it from cheaper materials, when they decide to take the price down a little bit, that's when we can get our hands on it. That's when it makes sense for us. And by that time, developers were spending one year creating software for it, getting used to the system. And when the general masses adopt this new technology, it's going to be full of applications and you're going to do much more things with it than in the first version. It's always this. This is the roadmap for Apple. Create something ultra expensive, developers start developing for it, and then finally Apple introduces it to the people. These are the things that we're about to see on WWDC, but we'll know more tomorrow. So please do let me know. Hit me down in the comment section below in the first hour. I'm always there. So you can send me questions. You can send me questions about the fake iPhone video. You have a lot of questions over there. Hit me down here in this comment section. In the first hour, I'm there. Let's talk. Let's chat. Sunday night. What else do you have to do? I would like to take this opportunity and tell you that when this channel reaches 50,000 subscribers, I will be giving away an iPhone. In one of my videos previously, I promised you guys an iPhone. Go back, check that video. Find it. Find that video is there. When we reach 50,000 subscribers, one of you is going to have an iPhone. It's simple as that. And there's a new challenge, 100,000 subscribers, iPhone 14 Pro Max, boom. All you got to do, like this video and comment something. And then the next video comes out like that and comment something under. Until we get to 100,000 subscribers, you can comment on any of the videos. And all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and keep liking the videos. And one of you, yeah, going to have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Truth. And at 50,000, there's another iPhone. Go back, check that video.